stands today. I'll come back and talk a little bit about the project as it relates to the assorted regulatory framework that will influence the, uh, the harbor garage. And we'll come back and talk further about public realm possibilities that exist for us as it relates to the garage in place and we'll build it up. And she'll also discuss with us what might happen from an aspirational point of view if in fact the garage were to go away. What could we do to be more responsive to some of the guidelines? How can we improve all of the things that we'll be viewing you shortly as it relates to uh, public realm? We're focused on the public realm because we think it's right for the discussion, and we look forward to your feedback. Okay, so I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Ryan. So as many of you know, the, the Harbor Garage um, stands in the way of both physical and visual access to the waterfront. And you can see here the, the blue arrows um, coming from the city out to the waterfront and back. But where the greenway and the waterfront are closest, you can see the red arrow, there's a 275 foot long wall um, that blocks that view. We have the opportunity, as Don said, to create significant access here. The second thing we've noticed is it creates a programming gap in this area. So to the north of us is this great tourist node of the aquarium, the tea station, the Marriott, the ring fountain, etc. extremely active. And to the south of us, we know we're here, Rose Wharf, the restaurant, the pavilion, the water transport terminal, also very active. And what takes place in between one of the most important decisions we can make for the future. We ask ourselves the questions, how can we open up this area? Connect the greenway to the water? Can we provide activity where there isn't any today? And can we provide more public open space? As we just look briefly at that north activity note, look at the life that's pulsing. As you mentioned, the ring fountains, um, there's incredible, this was a picture from me going there in the middle of summer. Great place to be. The south activity note at the hotel also, both at the Greenway side and the waterfront side, just pulsing with light. And here's the gap. So on the top three photos are, is the space behind the water, the harbor garage, kind of awkward plaza of ramps and uh, brick paving, etc. And then below as well, the gap at the harbor towers um, as you walk around. The third part of the urban condition is the long utilitarian facades that face all four sides. So we really ask well, ourselves, and we ask you as well, what is the public health potential for this site? Thanks, Mark. Let's go to the first slide. So what I really want to do is briefly cover, and I think many of you know this already, but it bears restating some of the bones with respect to the Greenway guidelines, some of the bones with respect to the Chapter 91, and certainly some of the bones related to the goals of the municipal harbor plan. Okay, so first of all, the Greenway guidelines for the Wharf District say pretty clearly goals, permanent interconnections between the Greenway and the Harbor Walk, create them at every new development so that the open spaces of the Greenway and those of the waterfront will work synergistically to form an attractive, widely multi use destination answer. Greenway guidelines related to the Wharf District goals create and enhance access to the waterfront, reinforce the openness of the freestanding pier like structures, facilitate the accessibility of the harbor walk, further diversify abiding uses. Chapter 91 goals, I think we're all quite familiar with them. The harbor garage today, it seems to us, frustrates the core principle of Chapter 91, which is access for the public to the water. Without the municipal harbor plan, Chapter 91 would impose certain baseline height and open space requirements. And there are clear step back height formula requirements, and there's a 50% open space requirement for new construction. Sometimes it leads to some odd shapes and sizes and some things that are relatively contorted, hence the uh, opportunity to discuss things through the municipal harbor plan. Chapter 91 also requires facilities of public accommodation or FBAs. And we're on field, private tide lines, ground floor FBAs are required, uh, only within 100 feet of the shoreline. So whatever we do here, whether the garage stays or goes, will impose certain requirements for facilities of public accommodation under Chapter 91. Municipal Harbor Plan objectives, consistent in some cases, some of the things we've heard. Further increase public access to the waterfront, improve activation and year-round programs, Enhance connections between the waterfront, the greenway, and adjacent communities. 
facilitate a greater building density and diversity of uses that complement the unique open space resources of the district, taken directly from the notice to proceed document. Boston's new waterfront mixed use project, I hope we will all agree, have benefited from the uh, thoughtful deliberation associated with the municipal harbor plan process. We wanted to record also, and I think many of you probably participated in the charrettes related to the municipal harbor plan process. And there were some very interesting and exciting things that were mentioned in many of them. Waterfront dining, okay, pretty obvious. Interpretive signage, historical, environmental, and wayfinding. Four season activities. I've heard about some of those ideas tonight already. Elevated public viewing areas. What about places for kids, children? International nights on the water or cultural events. A beach. A canal that brings the harbor to the Greenway. What about a farmer's market? What about a rotating attraction? All intended to seek to create programming that's year round and encourage the access to the waterfront. With that framework, I'll turn it back to Tamara to talk with you about some of the things that we see related to the different uh, options that we have. So first we looked at just what would happen, what, what is the existing condition of the garage to keep it as is in terms of the public realm. So the current ground floor plan, which many of you may be familiar with, but it's, it's good to look at it again, has ramps in the center of the, of the building with vehicle entrances coming in on both sides. It also has a very narrow sidewalk on the north side, for some reason, um, where the foot traffic is actually highest. And there's some pretty shallow retail depths that face toward the Greenway. As we go around the project, we start north at the aquarium. You can see that narrow sidewalk at Milk Street with an eight-foot overhang, and four lanes of car entry exit into the garage, which is not very conducive if you've ever walked there with your kids, which I have, to pedestrians. On the east side of the waterfront, we have a 12-foot wide overhang and a 62-foot wide open space. But that space currently lacks visibility from the Greenway. On the south side, the Harbor Towers, we have a, very, a pretty wide sidewalk, 19 feet, and you send your row. But the landscape right now, the way it's uh, currently constructed, makes that space feel a little smaller. It has two lanes of car entry and exit, plus a loading dock, and it lacks pedestrian activity. But it has a good thing going for it, lots of sun. On the west side, facing the Greenway, we've got a 20-foot wide sidewalk, a 12-foot deep overhang, one row of street trees, and one lane of parking. And I think the big point also on all these slides is the top bubble on the upper, upper right, which is that in the end, the seven parking decks tend to overpower the scale of the ground floor retail. So one thing, I had it, it's doing that, but <laughs> um, one thing that we looked at was if we just leave the garage, could we improve the base? And yes, we could do that. You can see the project on the left in Philadelphia has done that. They've added awnings, put in the Starbucks. They've pulled the, the storefront facades out to the edge to eliminate that dark, shadowy overhang. Um, and they've done some new street lighting. Um, and on the far right, is an, it's an aspirational image of if you did have some opening doors and you could get much more glow between the inside and the outside of the street. If we built over the garage, um, you know, nine, ten floors of residential, then it begins to the economics work to reclad the garage. And here we're just showing four ideas. There's many different ideas about cladding a space like this and being able to light it and make it sculptural. In this scenario, we don't open up access to the water. We also don't trigger any significant Chapter 91 issues. So in the end, the sidewalks can be improved. We can do nice paving, nicer street lighting, street furniture, etc. But the sidewalks themselves can't be widened by keeping the garage or building on top of it. So now we ask ourselves, what if we try to develop a new project? What would the public realm possibilities be that could shape the new development from the ground up? And the thing about the site that is so interesting is that it's completely different on each of the four sides. So we looked at them separately, starting with the north of the aquarium, then the east of the waterfront, south facing Harbor Towers, and west facing the Greenway. So we look at the north, starting with the north, there's lots of goals we have. Connect the Greenway, or you have as well. Connect the Greenway to the aquarium and the waterfront. Unify the central wharf, 
essentially as a singular place, we heard from the aquarium presentation a month ago, activate the ground floor and propose open space uses that don't require much sun because you're on the north side of any structure. And we asked, what could the character of this connection be? So we came up with some aspirational images. We could definitely widen the sidewalks and have outdoor cafes, the Van Gogh image. Um, use paving to connect to the aquarium. Some of the images on the right actually have this kind of maritime theme, which starts to bring the water to the greenway, which is interesting. Provide some interactive street furniture. There's kids, there's families there. Can we be more inspirational about activating that place? So we did three, we threw three possibilities up with ground um, about what if the site is reconfigured. So this first one just carries the width of the greenway sidewalk, which is 32 feet, across the Harbor Garage site, as you can see here. This is where the building is currently, the building footprint. So moving it back to 32 feet, adding a line of lights and banners, which is consistent with some of the aquarium costs they had, and some outdoor dining. A second possibility would be to use paving to take that entire space and turn it into a forecourt for the aquarium. And they were talking about doing some interesting um, graphics and things on the IMAX that, that would be their signage to the Greenway. And there again is that the edge of the building. Or if we followed some of the Greenway design guidelines, then create a 60 foot wide sculpture plaza which opens up a peak toward the water, and you can see more of the IMAX. There's the existing building. So then we turn to the east side of the waterfront, energize the harbor walk and the water sheet, it's definitely a goal here, activate the ground floor, and potentially connect to the aquarium and the children's activities there. The space has incredible possibilities, and we couldn't <laughs> hope to capture all of them because of the scale of it. So we did just a few ideas. The first was maximize the waterfront dining. People love to eat near the water, and you can see as, as Boston grows the, uh, the amazing opportunities of coming to eat by the water. You could add places to picnic and lounge by the water. Here is a project in Paris, here in the Seine. Uh, lounge chairs, chase lounges for our own esplanade. We could commission some really engaging art that um, pulls in the attracts kids or even adults like us who think like kids. Or we can add a pool or a beach. Some of these are some pretty fascinating ideas. The upper right from Seattle um, and the lower left from Berlin, which is actually a real swimming pool. That's a public pool in the center of Berlin. And we can program events there as well and in line with the water sheet. So we did three possibilities here, we illustrated them. So one is, the first one is, what if we create several zones? So to the far left is the outdoor dining toward the waterfront, and then a series of learning lab sculptures that bring the kids in and create a fun place to play. And then a zone of grassy area with some trees that just is a great place to lounge, and potentially a, an outdoor stage, a temporary stage in the water where boats could pull up as well and listen to some music. Second possibility, swimming pool by the water. Uh, this one is really trying to take advantage of if you want to get near the water, but wouldn't you like to be in the water? Um, so, but as I sort of caveat to this, you know, notice along the bottom, it, it would actually need a secure fence around it um, for, for children's safety, and we have not illustrated that here yet. And then the third option is sort of a, a, a or a possibility is a sort of riff on the swimming pool, which is to think about a four season swimming pool option, which would be sort of hot and cold tubs. And maybe we could use the energy recovery from the building to heat those pools and they could become a really interesting place to be, very modern for Boston. And we come around to the south side. South side goals connect the greenway to the waterfront, activate the ground floor, and propose open new space uses that really can benefit from full sun. I want to look at this image carefully because you can see the way the greenway itself opens up toward the south of the harbor garage. And so the blue dotted outline on this open space for envisioning or beginning to postulate really gets full sun 
most of the day for most of the year, which has really great opportunities. So as far as aspirational programs, the hotel lobby lounge should reach out into that space, more of the restaurants. We could look at more places for casual lounging. And on the right hand side is one of the fire pit. So we thought about, you know, could people be drawn there as well in the winter time and not just the warm weather? Or could you play games, um, have some real active recreation, bocce courts, volleyball um, in the sun? Provide a pool, a lake, a waterfront to the Greenway? Wasn't such a crazy idea, maybe, from one of those um, one in three charrettes we heard. So we drew, three, drew up three possibilities. This one is just simply widening the sidewalk to match the Greenway. Um, and then pushing in the, the hotel lounge lobby to have more outdoor seating. And that already opens up this incredible view of the harbor that doesn't exist today. And there's the existing uh, edge of the footprint of the harbor garage. Secondly, if we said, okay, so I'm going to show you here is the existing edge of the harbor garage, if we were to push back um, that 60 foot open space on the south side rather than on the north side, what could we do with it? And this is an idea of bocce courts and outdoor ping pong and beach volleyball and a really active play area on the south side. Or crazier yet, would we think about putting a, that canal in that those um, young folks thought of in the one and three uh, charrette and really connected the greenway to the waterfront by this actual water element we added a sandy beach because we thought that was an interesting idea, and then the outdoor dining from the building itself. And this the existing Harbor Garage footprint. And we couldn't help ourselves to think about what that might be in the winter time. And it's as an ice skating rink for 200 people, maybe. Um, as well as you can see some of the fire pits and the glowing lamps and the trees, um, and, the, and the incredible view to the water that's provided. On the west side, lastly, coming around to the Greenway, one thing we've heard over and over again in the planning process is buildings should have their fronts now on the Greenway. The artery's gone, let's make it a front. Second, activate the ground floor as always, or potentially use this as a way to see through the water. So we thought we could continue the sidewalk dining and shopping experience have that strong building entrance on the Greenway. Something really dramatic that says, I have face that is facing the Greenway, and I have the Greenway support. Create a through gallery to the waterfront. This is a different idea where it's an indoor, big atrium that you can really use for season, do some shopping in there and eating. So two possibilities we drew. This one is just trying to extend the park and the notion of sort of public realm of the park to this side of the street. So we see the building entrance and it's a mostly public zone. And here's where the existing footprint of the garage is right now. So it's not that much wider than where it is today. And the second one is if we were willing to give up the, some of the street parking, then we could pull that park sense really over to this side of the street, just leave a drop off at the building entrance and then have space for outdoor dining that faces the Greenway on this side of the street. So to wrap it up, I wanted to mention some practical notes on new development. So one of them is that any, any new project, if we take that, that attack of the new scenario, would have a garage, same size as it is now, but built underground, and that would require some sort of entrance and exit ramp location we would want to reduce its impact as much as possible. We would want to do traffic studies to figure out where it's best to put it. And we just showed two examples of sort of low impact entrance exit ramps. One is Rose Wharf, the other is Post Office Square Garage if it goes in an open space. And then the other thing is that regardless of any, any new development shape to the building, it's possible to widen the sidewalks on any side to relate better to the surrounding context. So, Let's say if we wanted to align all the buildings that were on the side, this side of the Greenway here, we wanted to align with the sidewalk width there or there on the Greenway, that's easy enough to do. On the other hand, if a larger open space and some of the ideas that we showed today 
is desired or feels like that might be the right thing to do, then the question becomes, is it best on the north side or the best on the south side? So here it is on the north side, sort of an extension of that open space that already exists on that side. And here it is on the south side, showing a giving power tower some breathing room and a real connection for view from the greenway to the waterfront there where they're absolutely the closest that they can be. Except for Roosevelt. So that's the end. I'm gonna hand it back to Fred. Very briefly, and then Dr. Otto will wrap up. But I, I would simply say the options to us and the challenges and opportunities are really, really interesting. What a, what a fascinating subject. And there's no question in our mind that the contribution it makes in energy it gives and gets on a four-sided front building is very, very exciting to us. Exciting to us for possibility. So we look forward to further discussions about the public realm issues and impacts first with your assistance in helping us to prioritize those which will influence future design. We ask now to do our Thank
there's such an opportunity on this site that to be showing and focusing on the public realm and the public benefits and what's possible is should be the driver of this dialogue and the driver of the potential of this site. Um, and so it's positive and like looking for the future, what we do want as opposed to what we don't want. So I think the idea is exciting. There's probably lots more and people have on um, you know in this whole group. So Bring it on. This is, this is great to reframe the whole dialogue. Great. 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 <laughs> this is a question for the adding team. Um, my name is Greg Bassel. I'm from the Greater Boston Real Estate Board. Um, with this opportunity, if we were to order the existing Harvard Garage was to stay, um, in many ways, wouldn't we sort of preserve the sort of block that, that the elevated highway was to the city? And wouldn't we be missing an opportunity, a once in a lifetime opportunity to reactivate the waterfront? Uh, thank you for the question, Greg. I'll, I'll certainly uh, take this down. But I, I think if our, if our presentation wasn't clear enough, the answer is yes. Uh, but, again, but I would stress that there's a lot of ways to do a viable project. I think it's pretty clear that what excites us and makes our heart beat faster as people who own our business in the city and work in the city are the opportunities that arise if we do something different. The constraints that the garage imposes on retail tenants, attracting terrific retail tenants, is very, very difficult. The edges are hard. The activation is poor. The programming is difficult. So there's no question in my mind take it back to the goals and objectives of the planning guidelines that we referenced from an extra point of view, visually making the connections and physically making the connections between the waterfront and the greenway, at the same time creating programming and activity that we want, that we all think will help create the sort of city and water system we want, um, is, is easier and more flexible if that large object isn't there. But I think we got to thank you and a lot here for having twins and getting you to know, think about kids. It's perfect. It's uh, it's, uh, it's really great to see a lot of these good ideas and as, as Linda said, really kind of activate the site and a lot of things that came up in various discussions. I have, I have a question for you though. You know, if you, if you go back to the opening of your presentation and the Greenway guidelines and the Chapter 91, etc., promotes four perpendicular lines of sight, pedestrian and access to the harbor. And you kind of tinkered around the edges in a very big and I think in a somewhat exciting way. Did you look at all of really slicing up the site and running from the, some of those perpendicular access to the visual or pedestrian right through the site, maybe multiple ways? I mean, the obvious answer is it may be cost prohibitive. But, and then my second question is, we know that it's absolutely feasible to put the garage underground, so close to the water and rising sea levels, et cetera. So what, two parts to your question, thank you for the question. I think that with respect to uh, slicing the site, I think the, the intention in the image that John has shown related to a perpendicular space enclosed or otherwise between a building and the ground floor that might connect, it could be open, it could be closed, it could certainly a temperate space or a non-temperate space. We did what it does. I think those things are possible. It's too early to know exactly what sorts of perpendicular connections um, might exist. And with respect to your other question, um, the, the number of cars that are currently housed in the garage today put underground is a, a sizable and formidable financial task. But there's no question that we think is viable and feasible as we learn more about the public realm priorities, which will lead to a discussion about design and density and mix of uses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we, we do believe it's viable with the right project. Thanks for the question. Any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you so much for your presentation. We greatly appreciate it. Again, this is all three presentations provide wonderful food for thought for the public realm. I'm going to turn it over to Rich and Chris uh, for the uh, Q&A uh, for, for 
will be the general public. And again, uh, thank you all for your time. But stay for now. We've got some time for you. So we're willing to take questions from everyone, anyone, on any of the presenters. Um, I just ask that if you do have a question, could you please stand? Um, we'll get you the microphone first. Just identify who you are and um, who you'd like to answer the question um, from any of the presenters, uh, whether it's Rose Ward, uh, Harvard Towers, or the Harvard Barrage site, or, or if you have questions for the VRA, press the handle that. So just please raise your hands if you have a question. Hi. The mayor of the VRA at Harvard Towers and also a trustee there. I'd like to direct my question to the garage uh, people. And I noticed that um, in your statement, you were very concerned about satisfying Chapter 91 and also the public realm. But what I did not hear was any addressing of the density of this proposed project that you have in mind and how it affects the residents of this area. And we have also nothing about any ideas about the height of this project. Again, thank you for the question. Uh, I'll, I'll take a swing if other members of our team would uh, would add or add to what I say. I would certainly invite that. I think that um, density, mix of uses, it is all incredibly important. And the process that we're embarking on will enable us to grapple with those uses. Uh, it's premature. And I think quite clearly our presentation did not speak to issues of density or height. There are wonderful things that happen with good density and good height, and there are horrible things that happen with density and height. And it all depends on the nature of the project. So I think we're trying to build a foundation and a dialogue with the committee and the public. And in the future, when the time is right, uh, we'll be back to talk further about those very, very important, uh, important and impactful concerns that, when done poorly, uh, have very, very poor results in terms of the nature of but would anybody else want to do what I said? Hello, my name is Robert Serker. I'm a resident of Harbor Towers. Actually, my question was similar to the prior one. But when you have your planning meeting or the meeting you talked about, clearly there, there's a trade off between how much public access that you do. And uh, I'm not a real estate developer, but the square footage of it. The project has to justify what, what you're giving the public. So I would hope that when you have that meeting, you somehow give us an idea or you're thinking about the trade offs between public access versus the size of the, of the building. Thank you. Uh, an entirely fair and responsible question. Thank you for it. It, it is more than our intention to do that. We, our business, Adding's business, has benefited from the power of engagement and collaboration, not only amongst our own staff, but amongst committees and amongst the public members who will be impacted by whatever it is that we do. So I think as we hear more feedback about public realm priorities, everything from open space to activation, we'll be balancing that with all of you about how much density, where is it on the site, what do we do if the garage goes away? If the garage doesn't go away, we'll have different challenges and different opportunities. So I think um, when we've gotten the level of engagement and communication about priorities with the committee as well as the public, we'll be working with our client to try to come back and, uh, and provide a, a broad picture that will allow all of us to assess the trade-offs and the priorities associated with that. Thanks for the question. Um, just for a little clarity on um, the Shredder workshop here, by the Harbor Garage Project. You know, we, we conducted our own shreds uh, through this harbor planning process. We intend to have a report uh, due back to the uh, committee uh, in the next couple of months. Um, property owners can do what they like to, to engage, uh, reach consensus on things that can happen to their, at their sites, but all of these things are reviewed by the committee through this process for comment, and it's the harbor plan that's issued by the city based upon the feedback we get from the committee that ultimately gets submitted. Um, so it's great that you're going to help build consensus for your project, but that, that's all uh, under, I guess, the umbrella of our planning process, our, our public meetings. Other questions? Thank you. 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 Th
Questions? This is great. Hi, this is uh, more of a comment uh, than a question. Hi, my name is Laura Logan, and I live at Barbara Towers. Um, a couple of things. One is clearly the garage is an eyesore, but it does, you know, serve the function not only for the residents of Harbor Towers, but for all of the visitors who come down to the waterfront, the aquarium, the boats, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that obviously is an important consideration. What is also important to me, at least, um, is that the development. Um, all these things are really nice, but there are 700 families who actually live here. So I'm not sure about the other people at, the, at Rose Wharf Harbor Towers, but um, I, I really moved down here for some serenity and not Disneyland. So um, I think that needs to really be considered when, you know, when you're developing stuff. The BRA loves this stuff. Close to, you know, no offense, close, you know, have access, et cetera, et cetera. But there are people who actually live here and want the peaceful and quiet enjoyment of their home. Thank you. Next question. Really? Anyone? Sorry, can we also ask a question of the hotel people? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, so for the hotel people, uh, I want to know if they see a distinction between resident, what they call residents of the hotel being people on vacation and party and residents who are 24-7 living here and as a result of how they feel about that. It, it, that determines what they do in their ground plane. So how do, they, how do they make that distinction and do they make that distinction? Okay. 
Hi, um, I'm Quentin Kearns, and this is my coworker Aaron Hodges. Uh, we are one of the younger populations of the city. Uh, we belong to the one in three demographic, which is between the age of 20 and 34 in the city. And we were actually at a couple of the charrettes for the uh, planning uh, brainstorming for the harbor front uh, when the VRA invited us to come and uh, add our ideas to what we think could enliven the city and the waterfront. And you know, we took down the elevated highway and created this wonderful green space, but we never really addressed what happens on the waterfront and how to connect the two. And this is a lively city. There's multiple residents from the young to the old, people who live downtown on the waterfront, and people who want to go downtown as residents of Boston, and then there's people who visit the city. And so we're really interested in what would happen if we made this a city destination for residents and people outside the city. Erin? I think it comes down to the challenges of the design and as architects, we're actually um, architects to be, and um, it's a really interesting problem for us to solve. How do we collaborate with the residents and merge the residential features with the commercial features so that it's not only a place for families and residents, but also a very highlight and a hot spot for young people and uh, people who are visiting Boston. Uh, I'll say keep Boston interesting, keep Boston um, a, a great city, make it lively. It's a question of 
the most successful places take care of the needs of all the residents, not just the potty mills. Building on Andrew's comment, I think we've gotten ourselves a little bit too wrapped up in the people who live here 24 7. Yes, there are a lot of homeowners here, but there are a lot of people at the Intercontinental who are guests. There are a lot of people at uh, uh, the Custom House who are guests, uh, at Rose Wharf who are guests. So it's, it's kind of like it's the people on the inside and the people on the outside. And we have to make that balance. So it's not just the homeowners. But it's all the people who, after 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock at night, are trying to get a good night's sleep. And if you, I think many of us have seen what's happened on Broad Street, and it turns into a carnival at 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night. And that all flows over to our area. So as we've talked about before, Rich, we need to be really cognizant of what we do in this area so we don't become like that, and that hopefully that area will get a little bit calmed down. It's not just about the homeowners, it's everybody who's spending the evening on the waterfront. Thank you. Thanks, Joanne. Hey, what, what's unique about Rose Wharf and was actually intended was the mix of use and where they're located. The residential component of Rose Wharf is at the north side, and then you've got the wing that we're in right now, and then the hotel office wing, and that's where um, the activities occur. And we have to think about it the same way, too. Uh, I think these are some comments that came up and a couple of our sharecks in the workshop is establishing residential zones, kind of like passive zones, and then areas where you can have active programming and, uh, and recreation. So those are things that we need to build into kind of segments of the downtown waterfront in consideration of residential uses. Yes, I, I just have a comment. Uh, we're talking about uh, these uh, things that, 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 that you just mentioned. And we have problems that exist right now that the city doesn't take care of. As an example, what about the homeless people that hang out with Christie's? We can't take care of that. I mean, where are we going from there? How about the homeless to the left, to the right? How are people just coming into the city that don't belong in the city that cause a lot of problems? You know, it's, it's sort of like uh, plugging up something that's already up to here and overtopping it. Why don't we take the problems that exist right now that seem like it's simple to take care of, but they don't get taken care of? You know, when you have problems with, with homeless people, I mean, we I, have some I'm issues. I'm not talking about so much homeless. I'm talking about uh, people on the street that have cops. I, I don't know, but I, I, I see people in every single car in here. And they interfere with traffic. Some of them are here, right? They go right off the street, up to your car. They have signs. Why can't we take care of those things? Why can't we take care of people at Christie's, at the market that we shop at, that when they open the door for you, you see the press, or they lean on you? Why can't we take care of things like that? Hey, look, those are things you need to bring up to the mayor's office, to the police department. These are issues that are happening in every neighborhood in the city. And you know there are responses to them. That next question. Uh, I'd like to say thank you to Mr. Chiaparro for the exciting presentation. Uh, I'm glad to listen to the charrettes and all the ideas that came through. It was really uh, a very eye-opening. Uh, one caution, as we looked at the history of Harbor Towers, we saw what the VRA wanted to activate the waterfront at the time, and we went from the fourth 20-story to the three and then the two. And when the building was designed, the BRA or whatever the agency was at the time, designed it as one site with the garage as an integral part of Harbor Towers, putting the boiler in the basement and the air conditioning on the roof. So then, in its infinite wisdom, the agency allowed the garage to be set apart. And so you have Harbor Towers constructed as an integral part of the garage with its uh, essential utilities there. And now that's been sold off. And we're facing a problem in which nobody is addressing. And I would just caution this body, as you look and in your enthusiasm for what you see, look at the city.
decisions you make and the impact it may have on not only now, but in the future. Million 
bystander, I'm particularly sensitive to the importance of being sensitive to our neighbors and doing things properly. But um, we just got to be careful not to get locked in and trying to do everything on one site or even get the whole balance on one site. It's across this whole swath of the waterfront that we've really got to be thinking about. Well, the good segue to us closing up this meeting. Um, our next power planning meeting is October, October 23rd. Continue the same program of uh, hearing from property owners, and I believe we have. Yeah, so we're looking at the uh, southern extent of the planning area. So uh, 400 Atlantic Avenue, the GSA building, the Hook Lobster site. Um, we may also try to get uh, some representatives in from our public works department to uh, discuss the Northern Avenue Bridge. Um, and uh, again, we'll also look to have a, another subcommittee meeting uh, specific to programming and Thank you, and I will see you on the 23rd.